Good morning children and welcome to yet another session of Sunday School Faith Online. In today's lesson, we will look at the life of another judge in Israel that is Gideon. Once again we see how at a time when the leadership among the Israelites was not yet well established and the people faced oppression, God encourages a poor farmer to come to the rescue of all. Frighten the villagers and rob them of their produce at gunpoint and of course anyone who dares oppose them is done to death. I ask you, how would you feel if you were children in these villages? How would you feel to see the fruit of your hard labor being robbed overnight? The Israelites faced a similar problem in the promised land as they were just about beginning to settle down by farming the land God had given them. They understood that this oppression that they faced was a result of not keeping to God's commandments and they prayed to him for help. Let us now look at the story of Gideon. God had given the people of Israel the land of Canaan as he had promised. Under Joshua, the Israelites served the Lord and enjoyed his blessings. But as time went on, they made friends with the heathen tribes of Canaan and began to worship their idols. Chief among these was Baal, and the more the Israelites bowed down to the idol, the more trouble came upon them. Midianites, a fierce desert people from the country southeast of Israel, invaded the land, robbing and destroying, taking away even the crops and animals so that nothing was left for the people to eat. Many of the Israelites fled to the mountains and lived in caves like frightened animals. In their trouble, the Israelites remembered God and again cried to him for help. Then the Lord Jehovah sent a prophet to remind the people that they had brought all this trouble upon themselves. Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, I led you up from Egypt and brought you out of the place where you were slaves. I freed you from the Egyptians and from all your enemies. And I drove out the people ahead of you and gave you their land. And I said to you, I am the Lord your God. Do not worship the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are living. But you have not obeyed the Lord. The Israelites knew that the prophet had spoken the truth, and many of them were sorry and repented for the way they had broken God's commandment by worshiping the idols of the Amorites. Then God in his mercy planned to send someone to deliver them. One day, Gideon, the son of Joash, was threshing wheat in his vineyard, where the Midianites would not be likely to see him. Suddenly, he was aware that someone was watching him. An angel of the Lord had come to bring Gideon a message, but at first Gideon did not realize that this was a heavenly visitor. The Lord is with you, you mighty man of courage. If the Lord is really with us, why then has all this happened to us? And what has become of the wondrous deeds of which our fathers told us when they said, did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? For well, now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of the Midianites. Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the Midianites. I am sending you, am I not? Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least important in my family. But I will be with you, and you shall defeat the Midianites. If you are really pleased with me, then give me a proof that you are really speaking to me. 
Don't leave, I beg you, until I come back and bring you an offering. I will stay until you return. When Gideon returned with gifts of bread, meat, and broth, the angel of the Lord told him to place the bread and meat on a rock and pour the broth over them. Then Gideon received the proof for which he had asked. Just as the burning bush had been a sign of God's presence to Moses, so the flaming food convinced Gideon that this was the Lord who was with him. But when Gideon turned to him again, the angel had disappeared. Then Gideon became afraid, but God spoke to him, comforting him. It is well with you. Do not fear. You will not die. Then Gideon built an altar at that place and called it Jehovah Shalom, which means the Lord is peace. That same night, God spoke to Gideon again, commanding him to tear down the altar of Baal, which was on his father's land, and there to build another altar where the people might worship the Lord. And Gideon said he would do this, even though he knew how angry it would make all those who worshiped Baal. And because Gideon feared his family and the people of the town, he didn't dare to tear down the altar of Baal by daylight. But one night, with the help of 10 loyal servants, Gideon tore down the altar of Baal and built an altar to the Lord. The next morning, when the people came to worship Baal and found their altar torn down and the pillar of their goddess Asherah destroyed, they were angry. Who did this? None of us would do such a thing. I know who did this. It was Gideon, the son of Joash. Gideon must die. Let us go into man of Joash, that he turn his son over to us. He is right. Gideon must die. Gideon must die. So the worshippers of Baal hurried to Joash and demanded that he bring Gideon out to them, that they might kill him. But as Joash listened, he realized that Gideon had done what was right, and he spoke against Baal in defense of Gideon. Are you fighting for Baal? Are you going to save him? Whoever fights for Baal, let him be put to death. If Baal is a god, let him fight for himself because his altar has been torn down. The worshipers of Baal realized that Joash's words were true. If the God they served were really God, wouldn't he have punished Gideon himself? So they began to have doubts about the power of Baal, and they no longer tried to punish Gideon. This left Gideon free to carry out God's plan, that he should lead Israel to victory over her enemies. Gideon's task was not an easy one. A large army of Midianites, moreover, the Amalekites and other tribes from the east had joined forces with them so that Israel's defeat appeared certain. But filled with the spirit of the Lord, Gideon sent messengers throughout Israel to call the soldiers together. And while he waited for them, Gideon asked God for another proof that he was the man who should save Israel from the Midianites. If you really are going to use me to save Israel, as you said, then give me a proof. I will lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If dew falls only on the fleece and the ground all around it is dry, then I'll know that you will save Israel by me, as you have said. The next morning, Gideon hurried to the threshing floor where he had spread the wool fleece. To his surprise, the ground around the fleece was perfectly dry. But the fleece was so drenched with dew that the water wrung from it was enough to fill a bowl. Then Gideon asked God for still another proof. 
Don't be angry with me, O oh Lord, if I ask for one more thing. Please let me make another test with the fleece. Let it be dry only on the fleece. And let there be dew all over the ground. The next morning, Gideon again hurried to the fleece. This time, all the ground around was wet with dew, and only the fleece was dry. Then Gideon knew that God was ready to help him lead his people to victory. The Israelites must have been confident that Gideon was acting under God's direction, for 32,000 men answered the call to arms. But God told Gideon that this was too many. A victory over the Midianites might seem to come from great numbers rather than from the Lord. Then God told Gideon to let all those who were afraid of the Midianites return home. And more than two-thirds of the soldiers did so. There were only 10,000 left. But God told Gideon, there are still too many. Take the soldiers down to the water. Place in one group everyone who laps up the water like a dog, and in another group everyone who kneels down to drink. And there were 300 who lapped the water. All the rest knelt down to drink. Then God said to Gideon, by the 300 men who lapped the water, I will give you the victory. Let all the rest go home. 300 men seem very few compared to the large army of the Midianites. But that night, to reassure Gideon, God sent him and his servant Pura to the enemy camp where they overheard the Midianites talking. I had a dream. A cake of barley bread rolled into the camp of Midian struck a tent and turned it upside down so that the tent laid flat. That means the sword of Gideon, a man of Israel. Into his hands, God's given the whole camp of Midian. When Gideon heard the dream explained, he knelt down and thanked the Lord. Then he hurried back to his camp to tell the Israelites the joyful news. Arise, for the Lord has given the whole camp of Midian to you. That night, the Israelites prepared for battle in a strange way. Each man carried a horn and a lighted torch hidden in a pitcher. At Gideon's command, they quietly marched toward the enemy's camp to surround it on three sides. And at midnight, when the Midianites were asleep, Gideon gave the signal for attack. The noise of the horns and the crashing of the pitchers and the glare of the torches, the shouting of Gideon's name, all this convinced the Midianites that they were surrounded by a great army. And so they ran away through the darkness, trampling and fighting each other in their confusion. Then Gideon sent messengers to the people of Israel, telling them to pursue the Midianites. And so Gideon and his people won a great victory, and once more, peace came to Israel. In their gratitude, the people of Israel wished to make Gideon their king. Rule over us, you, and then your son, and your grandson after you, for you have saved us from the Midianites. I will not rule over you. Nor will my son rule over you. The Lord is ruling over you. And so Gideon reminded his people that the Lord had delivered them and that they should faithfully serve him as their king. And the country had peace as long as Gideon lived and the people remained true to God. So you see in children, in Gideon we have an example of a judge who himself leads the people into battle. The cycle of Israel's cry to God 
and deliverance is once again exemplified in Gideon. Right through the incident, however, it is made very clear that it is God who calls Gideon to this mission. It is he who gives Gideon victory and so Gideon refuses to bask in glory for himself by rejecting the offer of kingship. Gideon believed that when the Israelites had made a covenant with God at Sinai, in doing so, they had really agreed to be Yahweh's people and to accept Yahweh alone as their king. Gideon was only reminding the Israelites of this. I invite you all to now take a prayerful posture. You may want to close your eyes and keep your palms open on your laps. As you do that, let's quieten our hearts. Concentrate on our breathing by breathing in and out. In, out, in, out. You will find your breathing calming. As we do that, let's prepare our hearts to receive the word of God. A reading from the book of Judges. Then Gideon said to God, If you deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said, behold, I am laying a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece alone, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so. When he rose early next morning and squeezed the fleece, he wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl with water. Then Gideon said to God, Let not your anger burn against me. Let me speak but this once. Please, let me make trial only this once with the fleece. Please, let it be dry only on the fleece, and on all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, for it was dry on the fleece only, and on all the ground there was dew. The Word of the Lord Thanks be to God! We have seen so far how God called Gideon to lead the Israelites against the Midianites and how Gideon asked for signs. First he asked that the fleece be wet and the whole ground be dry. And when that happened, he asked for a second sign, that the ground be wet and the fleece dry. And God kept on giving him these proofs that he was asking for. We've also seen that once Gideon was convinced, he launched himself into battle with just 300 men, trusting totally in God. God was so patient with Gideon. Are there times in our life when we ask God for signs? Signs that He loves us. Signs that He is helping us. Is there some decision that you needed to take? Maybe something that you were unsure of and you ask God for a sign and you have received that sign from God. Did that deepen your faith? We can get confused and discouraged in difficult situations. That's when we need to believe in God's power and trust Him to help us. Then our problems won't look so bad. Like Gideon, we can do what we need to, no matter what the odds, because we have confidence in the living God. 
ask God to gift us with the faith like Gideon so that we trust in his power just like Gideon. Thank God for being patient with us just like he was patient with Gideon. As we listen to the song and sing along. I just keep trusting my Lord as I walk along. I just keep trusting my Lord as He gives me a song. Though the storm clouds darken the sky. Or the heavenly trail I just keep trusting my Lord He will never fail He's a faithful friend Such a faithful friend I can count on Him To the very end Though the storm clouds dark in the sky It's time now, children, to reflect on what are some of your key takeaways from this lesson. And we will do this through a very short assignment where we ask you to write a letter to Gideon giving him your opinion on whether he should have or he should not have tested God. And don't forget to mention or give him your reasons. Once you've done that, don't forget to share the image of the letter that you've written to Gideon with your teacher. Thank you. Have a lovely Sunday and bye till the next time.